In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can automatically create Stripe payment links using make.com. Unfortunately, this isn't as straightforward as it should be. But don't worry, I'm going to guide you through this whole thing from start to finish so you can get started using this automation within your onboarding process. My name's Leo. I'm the CEO and founder of Fluxme, an operation agency that helps agencies all over the world set up skill proof systems. We've literally set up thousands of automations just like this our partners and agencies all over the world. Today, I'm going to show you how you can set up these exact same automations without holding anything back. The plan for this video is super, super simple. We basically just want to connect Stripe to make.com. The only reason we want to do this is so let's say you're on a sales call that you work so hard for in order to actually collect that money. The first thing you need is actually a payment link. We're going to show you how you can automatically generate that payment link using make.com. I've done a video for this about five months ago for Zapier, which is another no code automation platform similar to make.com. However, on make.com, there's no direct integration for the things that we need. So we're going to be using API, but don't worry guys, I'm going to be holding your hand through every single step of the way and making it as simple for you to follow. So you can just copy and paste this exact process within your agency. So you can get started using this automation as part of your onboarding process or your sales process. It's split into three very, very simple steps. First, you want to create a product, then we're going to create a price and then want to create a payment link. I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be. So let's jump straight into make and get started building this automation out for you guys. So guys, I've just loaded up my test make account that I use for my YouTube. All I'm going to do is head over to scenarios. And once we're here, what I'm going to do is create a new scenario. Now guys, as always, the first step of any automation is the trigger. In this scenario, it's kind of hard for me to set the trigger because it will depend on what you're doing. So for example, if you're using this as part of your onboarding process, you can use the trigger as an update in your CRM. If you're using this solely for sales to actually generate invoices, you can have a monthly recurring trigger that happens every first of the month, for example. The trigger is going to be highly dependent on your specific use case. So for this example, I'm just going to leave it blank. It doesn't really matter what you do. The main thing that the trigger does is actually start automation. The second part of it will be exactly the same for everyone. So for this example, I'm just going to leave it as a webhook. I'm just going to leave it blank. Now we want to add another module. I want to search for Stripe, which is the payment platform we'll be using in this example. Once we're here, we see a bunch of different actions and the ones that we want are create a product and create a price. However, as you can see, they don't have any of that. So instead, what we're going to do for this is make an API call. Now, guys, don't worry. I know that might sound intimidating, but I'm literally going to walk you through every single step. So it's not as complicated as it sounds. If you haven't already, you have to connect your Stripe account. It's literally as simple as just logging in. And once you've done that, it's time to actually get to work and actually creating a product. As just to be very, very clear, all the information I'm getting is through Stripe's documentation. So if for any reason this video isn't working at the time you're watching it, then please, please, please head over to docs.stripe.com slash API and check if they've updated any of the API information. As of May 2024, this is 100% working. I'm literally using it every single day within my agency, my partner's agencies. Please bear that in mind. If you're watching this deep into the future, then it may, they may have made some changes and to check all of that and how I actually created this is just by checking out the docs.stripe.com slash API documentation to get insight on what they're doing. So like I said, guys, the first thing we want to do is actually create a product. For this, we're going to use the product API URL. To save you guys some time, I've already done all the research for you. So all you have to do is copy and paste this. So dash V1 dash products. For the method, we're going to use a post. All right, guys, so the headers have been automatically added and that's just content type and the value for that. The only thing we want to add to this, if you go over to this little section called query string, we're going to add the item, the key, we're just going to put name. And this is where you actually include the value for the name. Now, for this example, I'm not importing anything in from a CRM. If you were, you'd reference the webbook that you just found and enter that stuff automatically, either in the name of the package or the name of the person. So for this example, I'm just going to put testing. Sorry, guys, I can't type package. Simple as that. And that's all we have to do. So now what we're going to do is actually test this to make sure everything's running as it should. I'm going to run this module early. And if you open this up, we should see the code 200, which once again, if you check the Stripe documentation, that means that it has actually been successful. How do we create a product? The second step is actually creating a price. So we're just going to do the exact same thing. We're going to add another module. We're going to go for Stripe again. We're going to make another API call. Because this time the URL will be different. Instead, it will just be v1 forward slash price. Make sure you spell it properly. <laughs> We're going to change the method again to post and exact same thing. The content type is already there. You don't have to add any of the authentication stuff because the make is generous enough to actually do it automatically, but we are going to have to add a couple of query strings. So for this, what we're going to do once again is go down to query string and item. And there's a couple of things you need to add. First thing is currency. 
So just type currency. Now guys, a very, very important thing is that this has to be in a three letter format. If you're unsure about your currency, then make sure you go on Stripe and actually check what the three letter format is. In this example, I'm doing US dollars, so I'm just gonna put USD. We're gonna add another item. And here, all we're gonna do is put product. And all we're gonna do is link that product we created in a previous step to do that. All we're gonna do is open up this star right here. And all we're gonna do is connect that ID. So we're gonna find ID, which is this part right here. And that's it, for that stage anyways. And then we need to add three more things. Firstly, is that the actual amount you wanna pay. So we're gonna add another item. We wanna add amount. And the key for that will be unit underscore amount. Guys, with Stripe, they always put in cents. So if you wanna charge someone $10, for example, here you need to put a thousand. If you wanna charge someone $100, you put 10,000. If you wanna charge someone 1,000, you wanna put 100,000. Basically, whatever number you have, times it by 100 to get it into cents. I don't know why they do it that way. It's just how the API works. Uh, for this example, I'm just gonna do $10. As you can see, I put 1,000 as the unit amount. And once again, guys, if you're doing this automatically as from updating your CRM and you already have that all that information set up in your CRM, you can just extract it straight through to create completely customized payment links each time. But for this example, we're just going to keep it as simple as possible. I'm just going to show you how to actually use the API. We're going to have another action. This is the reoccurring interval. Now, this really applies if you're the product you're actually creating, you want it to be charged every single month. In our case, we do. So we're going to just pretend this is a retainer. So we're going to put recurring square bracket interval close the bracket and for the value it depends what you're doing if you're doing monthly if you're doing quarterly this example is going to assume you're doing monthly so i'm just going to put month cool guys and last but not least we actually want to add a fifth item to this specific api call which is how often we're actually going to be doing this reoccurring interval in for us is going to be once a month so all we're going to do is put recurring again bracket and i want to put interval underscore then close that bracket in this case, I want to do it once a month, so I'm just going to put three. But just an example, if you wanted to do once every six months instead of one, you put six. Instead of this invoice happening once a month, it'll happen once every six months. But once again, just for the example, I'm going to do once a month. And that's it for the price step. Now I'm going to press OK. And once again, as always, I'm going to run this module early to actually test it. And I'm just going to copy that ID from my previous step so it doesn't fail. Oh, perfect. So we have an error. Let's see. So it looks like we made a mistake, guys. It's not price. It should be prices with an S. So if you run this again, it should work. Perfect. Let's double check that. We need to get output 200. As you can see, it's now generated a price based on our product. Now, guys, we've created a product. We've created a price. All the thing we need to do is actually create a payment link. So for this, all we're going to do, once again, add another module. Do Stripe. Rearrange it back here. We're going to make another API call, of course. This time, the URL for the API call is going to be b one dash payment underscore link links with the S. Don't make the same mistake I did last time. Uh, the method is once again going to be post. Content type is already added automatically. We need to add two things, the price and then the quantity. So for this, all we're going to do is add another query string, same thing we did last time. And here we're going to put line underscore terms bracket zero close bracket price close bracket. We're going to enter that price from a previous step by entering the ID. And then we're just going to do the exact same thing, but for the quantity, it's so going to put line underscore items, close bracket, zero, close bracket, open bracket, quantity, and close that bracket again. And here we're going to put one, because obviously we don't want them paying twice. It's going to be one time. Now we're going to press OK. And this is the final step, guys. So we've time to find out if it actually works. We're going to copy and paste that from the previous step, the actual ID for the price. So we can actually test this out looks good let's run it with the body and let's see if we set everything, everything correctly so line itemers so i must have made a spelling mistake somewhere should be items not itemas apologies for that guys if you're doing this properly make sure you're spelling it correctly and then we could press ok and then test that again as you can see the run was completed let's double check that this payment link actually works if you scroll all the way down to the url open this up look at that 10 per month, charge once a month, and all that your prospect would have to do is just sign up and automatically complete it. Guys, there's a lot more you can do here. So if you just came for that specific tutorial, then goodbye, thanks for watching. A key thing here is figuring out the right trigger. If you're doing as part of your onboarding process, then I would do it as an update in my CRM. For example, adding a card to a specific stage. Within that card, we need that, we'd have a bunch of information such as the name, the package they're choosing, billing frequency. So for example, if it's once a month, once every three months, or if it's just a one-time payment, 
the amount, which is extremely important. And you'll see, instead of us all putting fixed amounts within the boxes, you're creating throughout this entire automation. We input data from the initial webhook or the trigger and add it in. So each of these things will be customized from the product, the price, or even the payment link. Obviously, you'd also need someone to actually put this payment link. So all you have to do for that is add another module and you can do Gmail, Slack, wherever you find easier and just include that payment link from a previous step. That's pretty much it for the tutorial, guys. Like I said, I don't want to make this too long for a reason. If you found this valuable, make sure to like and subscribe. I know it's not as straightforward as it should be, but I'm hoping this video will give you some clarity on what you actually need to do to actually solve this. If you're watching to the end and you're actually interested in using different automations like this in your agency, I've actually created this 20 plus page document going over exactly how you can use stuff like automations to sell a skill proof agency. To get access to this, all you have to do is fill out the short form in the description. From that, you're not going to only get access to this document. You're also going to get access to a copy of your onboarding process that's been optimized based on your specific pain points, a copy of your client journey that's been optimized based on your specific pain points, and five different automations that you can set up with a step-by-step -step guide on how you can actually do that, once again, based on your specific pain points. This is an example of an AI-powered lead magnet. It's an extremely powerful tool. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I really encourage you to check out the first link in the description and complete that short form. Lastly, if you want to save $100 a month for this scalable system that will allow you to take on more clients without ruining your service delivery or profit margins, you can check out the second link in the description to get access to this quick 10-minute training going over exactly how we sell up skill-proof agencies. Now, we'll see that this is not for everyone. If you're looking for just one-off automation builds, then there's definitely better people to go to. But, but if you're at a point where you need to actually optimize your operations and you want some experts to actually do that for you, then book a call with our team. We'll have a look to see if we can actually help you guys out. But like I said, that is not for everyone. So if that's not you just yet, don't worry. Make sure you keep using all of the content that we're releasing on YouTube or email newsletter because it's insanely valuable and I don't know anyone else leaving this much value on a consistent basis. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about anything I said or went over in this video, please do drop a comment below. I'm more than happy to help you guys out. As of May 2024, this is the easiest way to actually do this. Hopefully we make we'll add some more integrations to make this a bit easier for you guys in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.